What's up guys, so as you may recall, I promised to do some Hit Film Express tutorials and now today we're finally gonna get into it. So to preface this tutorial, I wanna go ahead and note, I'm not gonna show how to install the software or the basics of the interface. There's a couple of videos that already cover that that I'm gonna have in the description. One is how to install Hit Film, like how to get it and install it and do all that good stuff. And the other one is gonna basically just be a rundown of the overall interface and how to interact with the program and things like that. I will be covering it a bit in this tutorial series but I'm not going to do it in a kind of linear chronological fashion. It'll just be as we go to learn the basics of what we're going to be showing. So that's just going to be how it goes. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so here we are in Hit Film Express. This should be basically what you see when you start out the program for the first time. As you can see here, I've got some uh, projects on the top left here that I've been working on in my previous videos, as I mentioned, or should have mentioned. But anyway, as you can see here, one of the cool things about Hit Film is they have a channel with tutorials on how to do certain things in the program, and they advertise those here on the program when you first start it up. Now, it may be different for Hit Film Pro, but this is how Express starts up, and it's pretty cool. You can keep up with what they're doing and what they're showing off on their channel just by opening up the program. So anyway, we're gonna get started here. We're gonna go right here to new. I'm gonna click on that, and this is how we set up our project. So I'm gonna use 1080p 30 frames per second because that's what we use for the Minimator Beginner's Guide series export. So I'm gonna click on that, and then that's gonna make our project 1920 by 1080 30 frames per second, and uh, I'm not gonna mess with any of this stuff. The audio sample rate looks like it's uh, pretty good to me so I'm gonna leave that alone this stuff I'm not 100% sure about you could increase this maybe I think this is more to do with compositing and things so as you can see down here we have start compositing start editing we're gonna start editing I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that okay so now that we're in the editing tab we can get started on our project here so as you will see here you've got a lot of things it looks a little bit intimidating but don't worry about that I'm just gonna be focusing on what you'll need to do basic video editing and things like that for your animations or even like your gaming videos or whatever it is that you wanna do. So the first thing we need to do is bring our footage into HitFilm. So what I'm gonna do is go over here to the Media tab. And as you can see, we have all these other tabs here, but we're gonna focus on this one for now because this is where we need to bring in all of our footage. So if you recall, we exported the Beginner's Guide as a PNG sequence, which is typically what I recommend for exporting animations because it solves a bunch of problems. Like if the program were to crash, you don't have to render everything from the beginning again. And I think it helps to bypass a lot of the issues with video codecs and things like that. If you want to use a video format, I probably would recommend MP4 if you're going to edit with HitFilm because it seems to work a little better with those, but that's something you may want to experiment with. So first of all, we're going to go over here to the import tab. We got this little arrow here. I'm going to click on this and then we have image sequence. I'm going to click on that. And as you can see here, we have the beginner's guide project folder. And this is the first render we did. And you may recall that we reduced the resolution to give us those cinematic black bars. However, there's unfortunately an issue with it, which I'll show you, but first we need to import it. So I'm gonna click on this folder. We could open it up like this, it doesn't matter. Otherwise you can just click on it and go down here and select folder, click on that. And then as you'll see, we get this trimmer window, which is basically a preview of whatever media file you select over here in the media box or whatever you wanna call it. So what I'm gonna do is hit play here. And you'll see that our animation begins playing and then it cuts out. I don't know what the problem is here. I don't know why HitFilm is doing this, but it goes up to 69 frames. And then on the 70th frame, if we uh, back up by uh, frames here, if we play this, you can see the little timeline down here, right about there. So we can go by frame and it's at two seconds and 10 frames right there. So on the 10th frame, it does that, I don't know why. So uh, what we're gonna do is just import an alternative. So I made this second render here and it doesn't have a custom resolution. It's just the default 1920 by 1080. And if we want those cinematic black bars, we will try to uh, introduce them using HitFilm. So here is our second render. If I hit play, There we go, looks like everything is playing nicely. I don't really know exactly why the custom resolution would be a problem for HitFilm. It obviously is able to use it for the first couple of seconds of the animation, but just so you know, that is an issue I ran into and it may be something you'll run into. So maybe just render out the full frame and then you can add your cinematic bars here in HitFilm. We'll get to that hopefully uh, sometime <laughs> anyway. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just delete this first one. So I'm gonna go down here, click delete. And then now we're left with our good render that actually works because it likes us and uh, we're happy with that. So what I'm gonna do now is grab this one, drag it over 
by holding left click and then drop it right here in the timeline on video one. And then now we have our video file or now our animation. As you can see, it's actually just a video file now because HitFilm has taken all of those individual images and made them into one video timeline. So the first thing I may want to do here, as you can see, this is a pretty small timeline. We do have a short clip. It's only about 11 seconds, almost 12 seconds long. So it is pretty short. But if we're going to be editing this and cutting it and things like that, we may need to zoom in. So you have this little zoom bar down here, or you can hold the control key and scroll with your mouse wheel, just like so. And as you can see, we're zooming in on the timeline and this is coming into view uh, much more easily. So with this zoomed in, we can use any of our tools up here. We have the drag tool and this is going to allow us to drag around on the timeline like so. Alternatively, if you have this one selected or whatever the basic selection tool if you click in on your mouse wheel then you'll get that same little icon there as you can see you click in and hold and then you can drag around and do like so personally that's what i typically use rather than having to go to all these individual things here but it is what it is then the next one you have is the cut tool or the slice tool shortcut is c uh, if you hit the c key then that'll bring you to it if i hit the v key that'll bring me back to this one c key goes to that one and then you have the slip tool. I personally haven't really used this one, so not really sure exactly what it does. The slide tool, again, haven't used it. Uh, the main ones I've used, the selection, the cut for the slice, and then this one right here, which is the ripple edit tool, which we'll get to in a moment. And then you have this one. I've used it a couple of times, the roll edit tool. Uh, and then you have the rate stretch tool. Basically, this one will allow you to drag the clip and make it faster or slower so if i click on here and then drag this back like this then it'll play like super fast and we'll uh, go ahead and undo that okay so let's say we want to go ahead and make some cuts in our video here maybe i want to make cuts right here you know where the camera angle changes so i can actually hit the control key and hold that and then use the arrow keys on my keyboard to advance one frame at a time if you see the little numbers right here and right here, it's showing you what frame we're on. And if I just do like so, then uh, we can get it right where we want it to. Okay, so there's two ways that I can cut this. I can either right click here, and then I can say slice. There's also a shortcut there if you hit Control Shift D, which seems kind of annoying to me, but if that's how you want to do it, you can. So I can hit slice there. And as you'll see, it cuts it right there, or I can undo. I can go over here and click on this, or alternatively, hit the C key on my keyboard. It'll bring up the slice tool. And as you can see here where the timeline marker is, this little, I don't know if you can see that, but there's like a little red line there. And if I click it, then that's where it will cut. You can also click anywhere you want to, but using the timeline cursor there will actually help you to get more precise cuts. So uh, we're gonna just keep this tool activated and we're gonna scroll through and right about there is where we want things to happen. So we're just gonna hold the control key, use the arrow keys, Right there is where I wanted to cut. We're gonna cut again, and then there you go. So now that we've made some edits to the video, we wanna go ahead and start saving our project. And as you can see, we've just got this untitled project because we haven't saved it, we haven't named it or anything. And this is actually the save button. It shows you what the project name is, and it's also got the save icon. So you can click on this, or you can hit the Control S key to save, just like most other programs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click this and then navigate to where we want to save this. All right, so when you click save, this dialog box will come up and then I've navigated to where I wanna save this project. And we're just gonna call this one uh, Beginner's Guide and uh, we'll just leave it at that, okay? And then I'll hit save. And then now you'll see up here, it says Beginner's Guide and it's grayed out because we haven't made any changes since that last save. Okay, so now that we've got our project named and saved and we've made the cuts that we wanna make, so I'm gonna go ahead and select our selection tool again. And here's one of the things about HitFilm is uh, if you wanted to cut this, let's say if we wanna trim the beginning of this for whatever reason, if I grab this and drag it, which is how you can trim clips, I'm just gonna drag it over to here. You'll see that there's this big gap between these video files now. So when I go like this, back it up a little bit on the timeline by clicking up here in the timeline view, it makes the uh, cursor jump to wherever you want to go. Alternatively, if you want to play it from the beginning, you have this button here where you can back up to the first frame. Anyway, so we're going to click here. We're going to hit space to play it. Then you have this black frame area like right here that happens and it doesn't just cut straight to this. Well, there's a few ways to rectify that. And one of them is uh, right here. You see the way we did this. We trimmed it with the timeline selection tool. If I just right click in this area right here where it's empty, you'll see ripple delete gap. If I click on that, then that makes it pop back there. And then now we get 
that seamless cut that we wanted. However, let's go ahead and undo that. And let's undo our little trim there. If I come down here to this tool, the ripple edit tool, I can click on that. So then when I click on this and drag it like I did before, and I let go, this is where I want my shot to come in for whatever reason, then it actually trims it and then leaves it at the end of the other clip. So that way you don't get that little ripple there. So uh, I'm gonna undo that. So another way that you can do that is uh, we're gonna go here to our slice tool. And let's say we just want to go right about here and that's where we want the clip to come in. So I can go ahead and click on that right there, slices it, and now we have this other little bit, and this is the bit, let's say, we don't want. So I can right click on it, ripple delete object, and then that will do the same thing. If I, let's undo that, if I go ahead and just delete, then you'll see it does that same thing there. So uh, it really depends on how you're editing, but typically you don't want those little, you know, spaces there. So any way you choose, there's a number of ways to get around that and, uh, Obviously, you can just drag clips around as well. If I had clicked on that and deleted it and it left it right there, I can just go grab it and drag it on over and it'll put it right there. As you can see, there's some snapping going on. It butts up to the other clip. So those are pretty much the basics of how you would edit things in the timeline. You know, the basics of uh, cutting and splicing and trimming video files and things like that. Um, but let's say you want to do some other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and import some music. We're going to go over here. I'm going to import media. And I'm just going to go find a music file real quick. And we're going to bring it in and drop it into the timeline. And there you go. And now we have an audio file. So what we can do is drag this one over. And we can plop it right there. And uh, now we have audio in our uh, scene right there. And I can hold control and mouse wheel out to zoom out. I'm going to grab this and drag it and trim it up to the side of our video. And then uh, bring it on in like this. So then now we have some music to go with our scene. So let's say this music is a bit too loud. We want to bring the volume down a bit. We can actually just click on this right here and drag it, this little line here, and drag it up and down. And you'll see that the levels over here are pretty low. If I undo that and play it, then you'll see they're much higher. This is your audio meters. And uh, we want to have that low, but it's hard to tell how low that is. So with this selected, I'm going to come over here and go to the controls tab. And then you have properties. We're going to drag that down and you'll see here that this is actually our levels for the audio and I can click on this and drag it down you'll see that we have the negative dbs or we can drag it up we probably don't want to do that because it's already pretty loud but let's just say we want to make it negative 12 and then you'll see that line there actually went down to correlate to what we have here we can also click on this button here to keyframe it which is something maybe we'll get into in the future if you guys would like me to if I click on that we can keyframe the audio and you'll see there there's a little keyframe icon right there. So let's say we wanted it to do a, a fade in or something. Then since that one's right there, I can actually click this and drag it wherever I wanted it to go. And as I drag it up and down, it actually changes the value for that. And uh, what we can do is come over here and try to select this uh, keyframe right there. You have these buttons up here, but I'm not sure if they work for audio, but uh, let me just bring that down to 12. We'll leave that like so. And then we have this other keyframe here because it wasn't perfectly centered up. I can actually just click on this and drag it down. And then as you can see there, that creates a fade. And uh, that was kind of a messy way that we did it, but that's basically how keyframes work in this. You have a little bit more control over them with video files and the, and the uh, compositor and things like that, but that's basically how you can do it. And now we have the audio fading in. As you can see here, this first one is negative 60. And then as we scrub through, it goes to negative 12 on that little fade there and the audio will play at negative 12 db from that point on alternatively you can go over here to the effects tab let's go ahead and uh click on that button right there that we use to enable keyframes and as you can see it got rid of the keyframes so uh we have just the default negative 12 that we wanted to set it to i'm going to go over here to effects we're going to go down here to transitions audio and there's only one so it's just fade I can drag that over and then you can use that and that does basically the same thing but it's just one single effect and if I want it to be shorter I can click on this and drag it over and that gives us a nice little audio fade there. So the same thing applies for video if I click on a video file we're in the controls tab here we have clip properties which is uh, you know how it can blend if you're doing some sort of compositing kind of stuff. We have transform and this allows you to change other things we can scale the video down scale it up let me undo that we can come down here and rotate the video with this value or using this little 
dial right there and as you can see the video is rotating and uh, we can't really keyframe this right here but if we did a composite shot which maybe we'll get into in the future uh, we could do that and rotate the video with keyframes and uh, actually animate it and as you can see here we have this effects option with a little plus button this actually brings up the effects menu or you can go over here to effects and uh, just find something to uh, drag over it let's just say uh, what do we want color grading We'll go to uh, just something, we'll go vignette maybe, and we'll drag this over as you can see, and it highlights it, we'll drop it on there. And then now we have the vignette on the effects panel there. As you can see, I draw that down. And we have these other options. We can alter the vignette here, do a number of different things, and uh, just get that however we want it to be. And there you go, there's your effect. That's how you can go into them with the controls. Then over here you have the history tab and this is actually what's gonna show you all the stuff that you've done for however many undo options that you have available to you. That probably doesn't make sense. Let me go ahead and show you real quick. We go to file up here, we can go to options and uh, right here we have maximum undo 30 levels. And that means that we can do 30 things and it'll keep those 30 things in this list of options that we have. So if I click on this, then you'll see that some of the changes we made went away because we're basically going back in time to this point in our uh, saved 30 list long thing of stuff. You know what I mean? Those, those are words. This is the last thing that we did, so that brings us back up to where we were. And that's kind of how the history works. It allows you to kind of visualize the steps that you've taken and you can go back to those steps if you feel like you've made a boo-boo. Then you have text over here and uh, this works a little bit funky. You have to do a composite shot in order to do it. Maybe we'll get into that at a later time, but you'll still be using this. So this is how you get to it. It's on the uh, tabs over here where you can edit the font that you're using, the size of the text and other parameters and things like that. But that should basically cover the overall list of things that you would be using in order to do some basic editing. I'd recommend playing around with things like the different effects that they have. There's a ton of different effects in HitFilm and whatnot that you can get into and have some fun with. But that should at least help you get started. So that's going to do it for this tutorial, guys. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something. If you're new to video editing in general or if you're just new to hit film and want to give it a shot, hopefully it's a little boost to get you started and gives you kind of a glimpse at the promise of video editing and certain effects softwares. As you can plainly tell, we focused on some pretty basic aspects of the software for this tutorial. So if you want me to continue this, if you'd like to know certain things of how to do certain things in the software, then feel free to comment those and let me know what I should do for future tutorials in hit film express. But with that, I think that's going to be it. so thanks for joining me guys i hope you like the tutorial and maybe this kind of new format of the tutorial something i'm experimenting with and i'll see you in the next video